Alright everyone, this is Cobb and welcome to another Sunday's Q&A. There are a couple of updates I'd like to go over, but nothing is really big, so I think I'm just going to hold on to them for now. I really, really enjoyed the last Sunday's episode, which was purely a Q&A and it makes me feel a lot more in touch with you guys. And we do have some pretty sweet questions for this episode as well, so I'm just going to get straight into them. I do want to say though, to remember to post any questions you can think of in the comments below, and as always, I'm going to be checking over them when the time comes for the next Q&A. But for now, Thomas James Hall asks, will be your go-to tactic in a zombie apocalypse? This could be one of the best questions ever and mainly because I already have a pretty solid plan, I think, to at least make it through the initial impact of the zombie apocalypse. First off, everywhere I have ever lived has had an accessible attic and the flat I'm in right now has an attic and that's basically where I put Sophie as soon as I knew what was happening and we could shove a load of blankets up there and some warm clothes and coats and all that good stuff. Then there is a shop literally a few doors down from our flat so I'd go there with some bin bags and grab literally as much tin food as I could. I'd probably make three or four visits and depending on how quickly shit was going crazy of course. And then I'd make one final trip and steal as many 4 litre milk bottles as I could. And while Sophie's heaving all of the tinned and non-perishable food into the attic, I'd be pouring out all of the milk and filling every empty bottle with water and then passing those up to soap as well. So that's a ton of non-perishable food and a load of water to last us for quite a long time. And then finally, I would lob the bed and probably a cupboard or two down the stairs to jam the front door shut. Then the last couple of protocols will be to run a full bath um, of cold water just in case the water cuts out and this is going to serve as a mini kind of reservoir for us to fall back on if we are running low. Um, then grab a couple of long knives, make sure to grab a tin open as well because uh, that will help obviously and then pretty much just go and camp out in the attic and we might be forced to tunnel our way out under the roof somehow eventually and maybe try and escape by a rooftop but I do think we'd be fine for at least a month or two. I would survive though, I would literally do whatever it took. I like to think I'm good at improvising and getting creative to get by. Mac Spraggs asks, apart from the Elder Scrolls Online and obviously the new WoW expansion, is there any other games you are excited for this year? Heroes of the Storm is a game I'm pretty hyped up for and I do still have my eye on Wildstar but I'll admit from what I've seen so far I'm not as excited for that as I once was. And in my opinion the leveling is extremely tedious and reminiscent of World of Warcraft which I think also has some morbidly dull leveling going on. But yeah, um, apart from the obvious titles you mentioned, Heroes of the Storm is looking like a good prospect. I was quite pissed off though, and when I found out Blizzard were only allowing US clients to participate in the alpha testing, then Athena apparently got invited to play, so now I'm just confused. Anyways, I really, really enjoy Dota 2, and um, it's clearly a very different game to Heroes of the Storm, but it is a MOBA, so I'm at least looking forward to trying it out. Devin Perkins asks, what are your top 5 favourite books? and your favourite genre. Um, I honestly don't have a top 5 or even one favourite book really. I think I mentioned the complete works of the insane Edgar Allan Poe in a previous video and um, that is one of my general favourites and it has a ton of short stories in there but other than that I can't really name any of the favourites. As for a favourite genre, it's nothing specific. I really like character driven stories though and um, I want to be placed in the mind of my main character and feel alive in another world I guess and um, I want them to cry I want them to be in pain, but I also want them to overcome pain. I just like I want them to hate some characters, but also find other characters to cling to and cherish. Some books just don't give me that, and crime novels are a big one in my opinion. They feel a little bit robotic and a little bit cold. A man finding clues and experiencing twists and turns in a plot that just isn't for me. I want a man fighting to protect his wife and then while he's away, he falls for another woman or maybe he gets back. And his wife, who he nearly died for, has left him for the damn milkman. Um, a personal problem like that just grips me a hell of a lot more and this kind of stuff, though it can't really be generalised to a genre, really, um, is what I like in my stories. Ashley Chadbourne says, with you liking writing, maybe you could do a story night Saturday or just add some stories onto the blog, either would be awesome. I'm not really sure about posting stuff up on the channel really and maybe I'd make another channel somehow or some way uh, to do with my writing, sharing or 
maybe reading stuff I've done, but that feels a little bit weird to me, and I'm not sure many of you guys would even be interested in that. But the blog idea could be kind of cool, and um, writing is kind of like making videos when you start out, you can put your heart and soul into making something, but it takes time and practice to make something that people will like. And that sort of makes me a little bit nervous about letting anything I write loose into the world. Um, but hey, I'll probably need to take baby steps eventually, and maybe the blog is the perfect tool for that. Jenny Halili asks, hey Cobb, what do you think about Ferals and Rogues resetting being able to DPS half or more of your HP with all of their cooldowns and then stealthing and waiting for cooldowns and repeating the same shit over and over again until you are dead without you being able to counter attack. This is another thing to add to the list of things that makes me face palm in arenas right now. Um, actually I was playing some 5v5s the other day and we were in the Lord One Arena, I'm pretty sure the rogue we were facing in that 5v5 game re at least once every 30 seconds. One burst of speed and he could reach the tomb in the middle and get a re, um, and it was actually that easy for him to do every time. So it's pretty bad in certain circumstances, you do have to consider though, that rogues who go for things like burst of speed to get easy resets don't have shadow steps, so there's no chance of your healer being step kicked. Um, it doesn't make it much less frustrating to play against, though it's one of those abilities that obviously needs a cooldown or at least a much higher energy cost. I haven't had as much issue with Ferals, I don't find their opener as devastating as a Rogues and as a Destro lock. Um, their opener isn't anywhere near as scary, actually, and if they keep on running away to reset, it just benefits me a lot more than them a lot of the time. Uh, Blood Horror is just a very, very short cooldown and it is extremely good against Ferals. Amir Azani says, this has been on my mind for quite a while now. Why don't you try it for high rated 3v3s? I mean, you certainly have the skill for it, Cobb, but you keep on switching teams. There is a few reasons I don't actively try and push for rating, um, at least at this moment. And first of all, I'm just not that good. I know I'm nothing particularly special, I'm just a destruction wallet player who loves to play and have fun in the game and loves to share my experiences with you guys on this channel. The next reason is viability. Arenas are a lot about what is currently viable, for example, hunters and warriors have been nothing less than gods for almost the entire expansion, a hunter or a warrior that I feel I am just as good as will get higher ratings than me just because of their class or their spec. Now this isn't always the case, like I said I am nothing special, there are plenty of people out there who are better players than me, but it cannot be denied that there are certain levels of imbalance when it comes to the class and spec distribution and the higher ratings of the arena ladders. Destruction right now is not in a good place to compete at higher levels, KFCs, PHDKs and Dot Cleaves I would say counter Destro pretty hard and those are some of the common setups right now in the 3v3 bracket. And that brings me to my final reason, it is just not fun for me, seeing everyone spam instant cast while I'm labouring for an entire game to try and land one Chaos Bolt while having two melees quite mindlessly truck me for six minutes before I run out of ways to escape just is not a pleasurable experience. Now maybe I will play some Affliction on my alt Warlock and push a little bit with that but we're gonna have to see, I'm not a big Affliction fan as many of you might know but it is viable in arenas and it was kind of fun pushing it in Cataclysm as Affliction uh, so maybe we will see a repeat of that. Gonzalo Gagurovich asks how old are you? And if in Ward, supposing that Warlocks wouldn't be such a viable class, would you play another class and if so, what would it be? I'm 21 right now but I will be 22 in a couple of months, and which is kind of crazy, I almost can't remember where all those years have gone, I want a refund. And if Destruction Warlock is really really bad in Warlords of Draenor, I will still be maining a Destro Lock mainly because I have to, it's just the law. But if I was going to be ulting something to play when my life on my main gets too hard, um, it would probably be a Death Knight or an Affliction Warlock but most likely a DK. Um, and this is a decision I'm going to be making during the beta of Warlords I think, but DK seems to be strong most of the time. I kind of like the playstyle so it will probably be a DK. Asrin Ketin or Shetin, both of which are probably wrong, asks, can you give me some suggestions to anyone who's been 90 recently? So I think what you're asking is, do I have any advice for someone who is newly dinged at level 90? The best things to do practically are double check your keybinds, you want to make sure that you have binds that work for you and you can use quickly in whatever you're planning to do, whether it is PvE or PvP. Next, research some useful macros if you haven't already, and um, it's best to get used to using macros like mouse over macros or focus interrupt macros early if you're a PvPer rather than trying to take everything on at once when you start queuing for 3v3 arenas. And next up, just don't expect too much, if you're newly dinged at 90, chances are you're gonna die very very often while trying to gear up, often times before you even have a chance to react, just don't be disheartened, 
he does change everything, put on some epic music, maybe have a stream open in the background or something to watch on TV, while you are repeatedly sent to the graveyard, it's just going to make the gearing experience a whole lot more bearable. Once you've got your gear, things should start to look up and you can actually start playing the game, but until then, focus on mastering the basics of your class and trying not to get frustrated by gear differences. Anyways, that is all for this Q&A guys, please do share any questions you have for me below in the comments, I'm going to be scanning over them over the next couple of weeks, and to keep tabs on any questions I like in particular for the next episode. Anyhow, I do hope you all have an awesome Sunday, thanks for stopping by, and I'm going to catch all of you guys next time.